Adam Morrison here. When it comes to top-tier contracting, my go-to choice is McGilvery Environmental. They're not just any contractor. They're the best in Spokane and North Idaho. With years of experience, they handle it all. New construction, meticulous repairs, and asphalt overlays. From start to finish, they ensure your project is completed with the highest quality and results. And here's the scoop for this year. McGilvery Environmental has expanded its services to include asphalt paving. That means top-notch commercial parking lots, residential driveways, and road construction. So, ready to kickstart your project? Reach out to Kip at McGilvery Environmental by calling 208-556-6384 for your free estimate. Don't forget to mention my name, Adam from the Perimeter, and experience the difference that McGilvery Environmental brings to the table. Again, that's 208-556-6384, McGilvery Environmental. My number one choice for all my contracting needs. The Perimeter would like to thank our sponsor, HDG Architecture. HDG is a Spokane-based architectural firm whose aesthetic can be described as an understatement of badassery, an idea that sets the standard for their approach to every client and every project decision. The world is full of poorly designed spaces, and HDG wants to change that. Check out some of their award-winning work at studiohdg.com. Welcome to The Perimeter, Season 3, Episode 18, presented by McGilvery Environmental with Brennan, the producer. Um, coming off a good week for Gonzaga. Um, great win at LMU. Kind of a mm. funny first half and then a, a blowout home win uh, versus specific second to last um, game. We're going to cover the Portland game coming up and then a big one on Saturday at home, last home game of the season against Santa Clara, who obviously beat us the first WCC game of the season down there um, has, you know, uh, seating implications for the West Coast Conference. Um, so still a lot uh, to play for. We'll talk about black, uh, bracketology where they have us. Uh, you know, we usually have Lenardi and then what Fox and CBS has us. Um, and they're usually pretty spot on. Um, and then we'll talk about kind of an odd topic. Um, is there going to be a senior night? Mm. versus Santa Clara because there's technically only Anton but he got honored last year and not saying that you just don't but um, there's no seniors so it's kind of a, mm -hmm. a different uh, deal um, senior night's usually pretty special there's been some really cool moments in the past and I think the way that they have the kids walk down and all that stuff's pretty neat and um, hopefully the students are out in full force especially for that Santa Clara game but um, you know travel down to LMU um, kind of a weird game because they had four guys hurt mm. four, but in the pregame Huddy and I were talking about it like they still had enough firepower um, to be like dangerous and during the, the pregame scout you know uh, pregame meal that you know I go to and, and watch that's the message was um, you know, laid across to the guys like, hey, you blew them out at home and, you know, Dom's not playing. And I think I remember there's two of their bigs that weren't playing. Like, don't fall into the trap. This is still a very good basketball team. And they were spot on that first half was a, a really fun basketball game to watch. We shot 51%, 8 of 14 from three in the first half. Mm. They shot 18 of 31, 58%, and then 8 of 13 from three so it was 47 46 it was fantastic basketball game to um check out and then that uh will johnston kid went bonkers and the first had a 22 um australian kid he's got the best rat tail in college basketball <laughs> that, that rat tail is something well, else it's yeah but it's cool. it, but all it, yeah and also like you gotta remember like you know that might be a cultural thing mm. like a, a you know the aboriginal tribes and yeah. stuff you know what i mean so totally. you're like before you're like hey dumbass you know what i mean that's what i kept thinking i was like oh maybe it's just part of his culture so mm -hmm. like sometimes you always have to but it's a true rat tail yeah it's awesome it's cool and then they got leah pepe who was out um probably their best defender one of the toughest guys in the league one of my favorite players he's out for the season i believe but he's got like one of the best mullets in college yeah. basketball as well so anyway this team was dangerous um, he goes bonkers in the first half. We play good. And I kept saying on the radio, I'm like, we're only up one, but like normally, like if we're only up one against a bad team like that, you know, there were nine and 15 at the time or 10 and 15 or whatever. Um, 
you know, there's something to complain about. I'm like, look at the numbers are pretty good. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, uh, there's nothing to, they're just the one kid's going bonkers. You know what I mean? And like, we were closely guarding them. They ran good actions to them. They played inspired. And I, and I said it on the broadcast before I said, sometimes it's these teams like this are dangerous because there's, they have no, you know, they have no reason to like care in a, in a, good way mm -hmm. like there's no pressure is what i'm trying to get to and then like if you're playing like six or seven guys you know you're not coming out you play completely free mm -hmm. you play like mm -hmm. doesn't yeah. matter if you make a mistake um you shoot it with confidence you can obviously the only thing is foul is foul pressure you know like foul trouble but like you can like play like an au style like you did in high school where you know you're not coming out mm -hmm. and that showed in the first half um you know i was impressed with how hard they were playing. Stan Johnson does a good job of getting their guys to play hard. But again, like in the first half, I mean, we're eight of 14, knocking down shots, 18 or 16 to 31 overall, like seven to nine from the free throw line. I, we won the glass battle and we were sharing the basketball and it was just kind of like, oh yeah, this will be fun in the second half. Hopefully we can separate. And that's what we did in the second half. We did a better job on Johnston. He ended up getting 33 at 22 in the first half. Like I mentioned, 12 of 21, 7 of 11 from downtown. Great game for him. Happy for the kid. You know, it's pretty cool that he got, you know, really good game against Gonzaga on mm -hmm. television and all that stuff. Um, but we like kind of face guarded him and it, it really slowed him down. And then on the ball screen coverages, I think we double teamed him every time he came off of it, which is the right thing to do um, and get it out of his hands. Um, and then we kind of separated. I was proud of the guys, how they, uh, you know, hung with it. And about the 12 to 10 minute mark is when we kind of, made the the slow separation to where we got to you know six and then eight and then we ended up winning by um 17 um but it was just a fantastic game all around both teams shot it well they shoot 52 percent 11 and 20 from three we go 37 and 62 59 percent 67 in the second half and then 10 and 20 overall um from three for the game so like really knockdown shots it was a it was a beautiful game uh graham played great 11 to 19 at 23 points anton was fantastic 5 of 8 13 points 11 rebounds obviously double double ben greg was terrific 6 of 8 3 of 5 from downtown 15 and 7 he's been great as a starter mm. nemhard was fantastic uh goes 7 11 2 of 3 from downtown 16 points 11 assists obviously a double double in the assist category only three turnovers Nolan played great, 7 of 12, 4 of 6 of downtown, made all his free throws, 22 points. Um, so I was just really impressed with um, our guys, you know, kind of hung in there, didn't, uh, not freak out's the right term, but just kept sawing wood and knew that, uh, you know, our talent and, and their lack of depth, especially in that game, would take over. Mm. Um, I'm really starting to think this team's hitting their stride in the right time. Like they're looking better, they're mm -hmm. shooting it better. Um, I think having Ben Gregg, like we said, in the, in the starting lineup is, just, uh, is overall helped this club. Um, but overall, a good um, you know, game in L.A. That's always a scary place to play because it's not a lot of energy in that building, even though people come, but it's L.A., so it's a different crowd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a raucous environment. <laughs> right. Um, it's a weird gym. It's a cool gym, but it's different. Um, it can feel empty. Um, so if you don't create your own energy, you can get dicey. Um, and then you're in LA, like, you don't know if there's guys, minds are in, you know, other places. Mm -hmm. It's just a natural thing for a young kid to do. Um, but I was really impressed with that win. We obviously needed it to keep pace with, uh, um, St. Mary's, but, um, quick question about the game. I yeah. missed the very beginning of it. Was, were they doing like a celebration? Like, was there anything going on like for honoring someone at the game? Anything like that no, going there on? There was, uh, Paul Westhead is all they did. Oh, okay. It just had him stand up and he was at the game. That oh, was gotcha. The that's what I. Coach. That's yeah. what I saw. I was like, I, I, I saw that and I was like, are they on? Is, is someone honoring getting honored at another Gonzaga game? I was just like, I feel like, Gonzaga does these games and then they, they, they always bring like the yeah the, the schools always bring out their Somebody, best yeah. like during Be, these games because you know people are going to be in the crowd right it's time yeah. to honor them and, and stuff like that it makes yeah. sense um but yeah it was paul westhead mm. their former coach when yeah. they were 80 i think he was there 85 to 90 or 87 to 90 mm. that's what the hank gathers and bo kimball and they kind of kind of revolutionized basketball before it got to where it is now but score a ton of points mm -hmm. you know obviously he was the head coach of the lakers and they got pushed out by pat riley mm. um you know yeah for good reason you know what i mean like 
that was the right move, but he's a, uh, Paul Westhead's a great coach and, mm-hmm. um, he was just at the game randomly. It was kind of funny that I said it on air. It's like, it's like 30 rows up. You guys couldn't get a better team. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm yeah. just like, not that I'm saying anything, but I'm like, yeah, let's, let's, let's get him down by the court maybe, but, uh, that's here nor there. But, yeah. um, yeah, it was a great game, man. It was the perimeter. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Our family is all over the place sometimes, but ICCU helps us keep up with them. We use card control to turn on Olive's debit card when she needs to pay for activities. And turn it off when she's shopping online. We make sure Forrest is depositing his lawn mowing checks into his college fund. And we definitely make sure to ask Grandma Ivy where all those Zell transfers come from. Phew, was a lot of keeping up. You ready for a break? It's here nor there, but... No. Um, yeah, it was a great game, man. It was a fun game to call too, because like both teams like made shots, mm-hmm. um, and it was cool watching a team with like seven guys. They had six scholarship guys. They played seven mm. that just kind of like try to grind their way through it and play complete. You know, play really hard. Yeah, and, that'd know. be hard to lose four guys. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Dom Harris said he had a a knee to knee thing, mm. a bone bruise, so whatever that means. So he didn't play, and I was kind of disappointed. Not just the fact that he got injured. I wanted to watch him have a game against Gonzaga again on his home floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Leo Pepe just kills him, not yeah. having him. He's like one of the better just glue guys in the league. Mm. You know what I mean? Even though they're not having a, a terrific year, but when he's on the floor, he gives them a better chance. He's a strong player, can score a little bit, but just does everything. You can't push him around, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it really hurt him. Then then we uh, had Pacific, what was it, two nights ago? Yeah, on Saturday night. Saturday, yeah. Uh, Pacific six and twenty two, zero and thirteen. Um, home game. I full disclosure. I watched maybe two minutes of it. <laughs> I turned it on and I saw the scores. My daughter played in districts um, at five, and then the game starts at six. Normally, I'm on the air at an hour before, but I told uh, the guys down there, I'm like, I could show up at like halftime. As we- don't even come. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's pointless at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, we won by what is that? Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, our guys played really good. I'm just looking at the box score. Graham goes nine for nine, perfect. Obviously, twenty one points in twenty five minutes. Anton gets seventeen out of seven of eight. Ben Gregg two of four has four points. Then Ryan Nemhard seven of fourteen, eighteen points, ten assists. So two back to back double mm-hmm. double doubles yeah. with assists. Fantastic. Nolan Hickman, 5 of 10, 16 points, 4 assists. Um, and then Braden Huff with another. <laughs> Look at these. He played 11 minutes, and he goes 6 of 8, 2 of 3 from downtown. He gets 17 points in 11 minutes. That's awesome. Uh, the kid's a scorer. I, I hope, uh, you know, he understands that his role is going to be magnified next year. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a really good player. He's just he's got great touch, can shoot it, scores in bunches. Um, obviously, he needs to be a better defender, but I... I I don't think he's that bad, right? So right sometimes, yeah. it, sometimes it's just overblown how people get into that. Well, he's got, it's like, well, he's scoring at the other end. So what do you want? You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, you got to have, you got to put balls, the, the object to put the ball in the cup. Yeah. Okay. So I'd rather have that than a guy that can't fucking shoot and can't play, but it, well, he's a really good defender. Cool. And he has Remember that length. Four that, and five. And he has that length. He gets blocked shots. He gets tip balls. Yeah. Like I, I yeah. think like he's a, a disruptor. He like yeah. It's um. He's 100%. fun to watch. Yeah. He just I mean, he's got a nose for the ball. Like you don't score that much in that little of time without you know like knowing where a tip's gonna be and you go get a mm. cheap you know or you put you just slightly push a guy in the back you know what I'm saying but it doesn't get called or you angle him out and you get tip ins and stuff like that. Mm. Um, you know we do a good job on the glass too. Um, plus eight, and then we had 17 assists. So, yeah, great game for our guys. Um, you know. Two games shooting <laughs> shooting over 66%. Yeah. It's, <laughs> that's it's really good. That's and really then we good. go eight for 20 from three. I didn't mention that. We were 10 for 20 in the last. So what is that, 18 out of 40, so mm-hmm. whatever, 40-something, 40 48% or whatever mm-hmm. that would be, 45, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're trending in the right direction. Now, obviously, these aren't the best teams in the league. Um, but it's still the end of the year, and we're playing good basketball. It's better than the opposite. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got the huge three games coming up, which is so weird that they get stockpiled on the backside. Yeah. Um, 
but um, you know Santa Clara coming in, really good club, a really good basketball team. Um, you know, hopefully, what was there seventeen and ten, eight and four in conference. So we're just right ahead of them um, with the two losses. So that in their mind, if they can beat us again, and then somehow something happens, they can move maybe into that second place if San Francisco falters as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and they have a tiebreaker. But yeah, um, very good team. Play pretty fast. They got good bigs off the bench, like role playing bigs. Um, so it'll be curious to see. Yeah, and they just lost to San Francisco by one. Yeah, be curious to see how they play us, and then they lost to St. Mary's by five. Anyway, it'll be curious to see how um, how they play us at our place because um, they were fantastic um, in that first half. Uh, in that game at their at their place, the Steve Nash night, yeah. um, and we had a chance to win that game. You know, if we win that game, and you know, Nemhart's played fantastic, and especially in conference play, but he, you know, he smokes the front end of one on one. If we make that, mm-hmm. you know, up one, we were up three. Then obviously anything can happen, but we don't lose the game. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see. It's going to be a really fun game. It's a chance for us to firmly move into the second, though. Because mm-hmm. um, what are we now? Ten and two. Yeah, ten and two. Um, in conference, yep, ten and two. Yeah, ten and two. Um, so, I think it's a it's a great opportunity um, to get another. This will be considered a quad two win. I think, and they're in the sixties. Last time I looked at their nets, mm-hmm. um, so it'll be considered a quad two. And it's not just quad ones. They look at quad ones, quad twos, um, and it's a get back game. It's a revenge game for us. Um, so I know our guys are going to be hyped. Um, and then, like I, I prefaced earlier in the opener, um, it's the last home game, so hopefully our students are, are raucous and, and pretty yeah. um, vulgar in a good way because um, they were they are down there. Their students are pretty um, into it, which is good. Um, but we talked about it like, I wonder if they're going to do a senior night or whatever. Oh. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like they – It's. I mean, it's going to be – Anton Watson's very final home game, hometown boy. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it wouldn't feel right if they didn't do something like a 100%. video montage. Like, yeah. you know, like obviously he's going to, he already had the graduation experience last year, but like they got to yeah. do something. Yeah, no, they do. And and you're exactly right. Um, hometown kid has been a great ambassador. You know, he's never had any trouble or anything. Mm-hmm. Soft spoken in a good way. And he's had two great, you know, I'm gonna count last year two really great seasons. Mm-hmm. He's played fantastic this year, really grown into his own. And and I, I mentioned it before. I think he has a legit chance to be an NBA player. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't have said that three years ago, and that's just the real the real honest part about it. But his body got past the injury stuff, and then he got more confident. And he looks like he did when he was at prep. It was just the real like versatile mm. score. Um, you know, can do all the the steel stuff defensively is good, shoots it comparable enough from three, more bounce than you think, sneaky or quick. Um, so he has a chance legitimately to to play in a pro mm-hmm. in the NBA. And like honestly, you'd be a three and D guy, but there's nothing wrong with that. So um, yeah, I think they'll do some at least. I think video montage would make sense too. Mm-hmm. Um, be pretty neat. Um, so yeah. It's a really important game for us, obviously. Hopefully our guys are ready to go. It's a big game as far as the bracketology. I, again, I prefaced that earlier. Lenardi has us as the last team in as the 11th seed in the play-in game against Ole Miss. So that's the Day- Dayton deal, which mm-hmm. we've never gone to, but there's nothing wrong with that. The year we played UCLA in the Final Four, they were one of those teams. Yeah, You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, people don't scoff at that if, if, if that's what we are and – we have to go play another one. Like we should be happy about it. Um, Fox has us as a ten seed in the South versus Oklahoma. CBS has us as a first four out. So obviously these last three four games have helped. Mm-hmm. You know we were the last next four out for a while, you know, mm-hmm. and then so it just goes crazy. It goes up and down. Um, AP I think we're ranked twenty six right out of the top twenty five. Yeah, coaches pull not ranked. Um, I think we're 26, 27, same thing. Mm-hmm. And then the net, we're up to 23. So it's always like you want the net. The net part is more important. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like how we considered first for out, we're like the 23rd 
you know, with the algorithm, yeah, best I guess. team in the country. That's what I always, that's where I am always just like, I don't understand. Some of this I don't understand. And if you could deep dive a little bit, maybe uh, more, but some of it I'm just like, I don't get like how the hell would we be considered out for the top 25 in the net with the strength of schedule, yeah. you know, all that shit that really matters, mm -hmm. not just eyeballs and stuff like that. I mean, as we get closer to the, I mean, after, if we, if we don't, you know, obviously won the WCC tournament and we have to play that guessing game of like bracket, bracketology records and all that, but like, yeah, it's gonna have it's it so, does, so what are we right now let's see what our record let's just let's go over hypotheticals yeah. just real quick and we're gonna do this again obviously before the selection show if we don't win you're right or yeah. before we go to vegas but we're 20 and 6 20 and 6 yeah um 12 and 2 at home so 10 and 2 in conference um you know what are we we're 85 points a game scoring i think so we're the top 10 in, in offense efficiency that stuff matters mm -hmm. shooting over 50 percent uh, matters. We've climbed up to 34 from three, which is uh, we were at the 29s, 30s, 31s for a majority of that season. Yeah. So we definitely are shooting it better with volume. Um, so let's say, okay, how many games have we got left? Three, three conference games. Three conference okay, games. Okay, so let's say we go 23 and six. Sorry, this we is, have four. We we still we still got to play Portland. Oh yes, yeah. Well, I'm not even talking about that game. <laughs> let's just say we go 24 and six. Yeah. Okay. Um. And then let's say we win the second game or the first game. We get second. Let's just say we get second. We beat St. Mary's, but we win four out. Mm -hmm. We're 25 and six, and we get to the championship game at 25 and six. St. Mary's, the second game will be a quad one. San Francisco would could move into that potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then who else? If you if UCLA was still rolling like they were like two weeks ago, mm. that's the other one where people are like that could move into to a quad one, and then but also they count quad one losses are not as bad. Mm -hmm. So let's say we get to twenty five and six into the you know WCC championship game, and let's say we lose at the buzzer or something yeah. by one. That'll be really interesting to see if we're in or not. It'll be really, it will be really interesting. So it would be 25 and seven. Yeah. Let's we, just say hypothetically. Yeah. Um, that's curious because then we'll, let's just say for argument's sake, we're 28 and below the net, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever happens. But we'd probably move up if we won those five games that we just hypothetically said. Mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. 25 and seven with a win at Rupp, a win at San Francisco, quote unquote. Mm hmm. And then a win at St. Mary's, but then a loss in the championship game. That's going to be the 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 curious. If that happens, um, I don't even know if we're like. You could honestly ask me. I'm like, I think we'd be in, not just because it's a Gonzaga podcast, but it's also like, I I still feel like sixty forty going into the deal. I, you know what I'm saying? I I would feel. Pretty confident. I mean, Same here. And it, but <laughs> if, Pur if Purdue and UConn are both number one seeds, then we've true. lost two games to number one seeds. Like mm -hmm. that has that. I, I imagine that has me, it, it means, means something. It right? means something. So yeah, that's that's the that's the hypothetical uh, scenario I've gone through. Mm -hmm. And you know what the other better scenario is? Just if we finish second in the league, big deal. We get the top two seeds. Just go win two fucking games in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> I've said that. Yep. Just go win two games in Vegas. This team is definitely more uh, as, as talented um, as any team in the WCC. This team's got grit. They're playing fantastic now. We got a talented group. You know, we got Graham's averaging 15-8. Anton's averaging 15 Nolan's averaging almost 14. Ryan's almost averaging 13. You know, Braden Huff's 10.8. And then Ben Gregg's only averaging 8.6. But if you put his starting, you mm. know, numbers are going to be way more inflated than that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this team has got plenty of firepower and, and will to um, to play good enough to win that tournament. So I, I, I feel good where we're at. Um, obviously, Santa Clara is going to be big. We play Portland tomorrow. Uh the last games in Spokane, we went, I think it's 21, we made 18 threes, 22, we made 17, and last game we made 15. Yeah. So the only thing I'm going to talk about, if they back off us again, I'm going to just like literally, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, that, 
I was so going to ask a strategy. A, a, a strategy. It, to just let us shoot the three. Like I was just like so weird. It was a weird game I mean, to watch. Like I get closing out short, yeah. and there's certain guys you dare. Like mm-hmm. that's a hundred percent strategy you can use at any level. Yeah. But like the non-contest is insane. Mm-hmm. Like where lot guys literally stand there and they're like, okay, one thousand one two. You're not coming, and then like literally just stand like. You can close out short and late, and then a guy goes up, then you can test. Yeah. Even if he's a bad shooter. Mm-hmm. Always do that. Unless he's, like, in the 15%, but that guy's not going to shoot. Like, mm-hmm. you know, at that point, the, the other team's like, you better swing it and, and go set a ball screen or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, that's the only thing I'm talking about Portland. Obviously, we got to take care of business. You never know what can happen, but we're playing great right now. Um, and this is a big stretch, though. Santa mm-hmm. Clara... And then San Francisco, Asterix at Chase Center. So I'm curious to see how we play there. I think it's an advantage for us because we play more neutrals. Mm-hmm. And, we, and that building can get raucous, the the oh, memorial gym. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we don't have to play there. So it's like, mm-hmm. cool, we're playing at Chase. And usually our fans travel. Yeah. Obviously, there's more Gonzaga basketball fans than San Francisco. No offense to them. Mm-hmm. So it might be a... 50-50 crowd, maybe 60-40 in our favor. Yeah, There's a that, lot of Bay Area fans. Yeah, that that would be interesting. <laughs> there, there will be. Yeah. It's just how it's just we travel well. and mm-hmm. we're, You've heard me say this before. I probably said in the past seasons. We're always – we're everybody's, like, second favorite team. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, oh, yeah. I went here, but Gonzaga is always fun to watch. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, like we're Man City for the EPL. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, Man City, it's like everybody comparison. loves, like, watching Man City, too. Yeah. I'm like – Oh yeah, they're because they have like no history. Um, not that we don't, but you know what I mean. Like you're not like latching on to like you're just like oh they're fun to watch. They got Pep and all these good players, and they just came out of nowhere. Sweet, I can like them. Mm-hmm. Doesn't hurt me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see how to say we beat Portland, where our net comes to, but these last three games, Santa Clara at home, and then. San Francisco, then at St. Mary's, obviously massive stretch for us. If we can go three and zero on that, and then theoretically, let's just say we finish second, second or first. Obviously, we want to win, but if we get second, cool. You'd have the regular season championship. Hang the banner up. Go ahead. Yeah. Yay. Um, how, where our net will look and what bracket bracketology will put us. But I think I just really think if we win those three and then we get to the championship game. Obviously, we want to win it, but if something crazy happens and we lose at the buzzer or lose by one but still look good, I still I just feel like we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll dive into that, you know. When it comes to that, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to that. But, again, I'm also, like like I said, just win two bleeping games in Vegas and mm-hmm. we don't have to worry about it. Because um, then they can have, you know, go on a run in, in March. And, like I said, this team's playing – good basketball right now yeah they really are Mm -hmm. 20 and 6 is nothing to to shake your head at right i mean people need to understand um you know i was where were we going just going down to la and you know people see on the plane and oh yeah you know my son went here and and went there and and one of the ladies is like yeah it's such a weird year like we're not very good and i just was like i'm always like we're 18 and 6 you know at the time i was like we're 18 and 6 she's like yeah, and I'm just like, yeah, like, yeah, I get it, but holy crap, man! Like, it's not like we're like, you want to be Oregon State, right. Idaho State, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like these programs that literally are never good mm-hmm. at, at yeah. all. Oregon State obviously made that Elite Eight run like five years ago, whatever. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for sure. That are just in the the bottom barrel all the time. Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, we're we're spoiled. We're sp- very spoiled. And I, like talking about the senior night thing, like there are no seniors on this team. Like, if everyone comes back, mm-hmm. especially the key players, like this team's gonna have so much has Marguerite's this year of experience, experience, continuity, chemistry. Yeah. Um, so I like where we're at, yeah. and that's the honest truth. People understand that. Fans that listen to this podcast for a while know that I'll I'll tell you ninety nine percent of the truth. Mm. Some stuff I gotta omit right. just to <laughs> to be normal. But you know, there's certain things I, I'm not gonna say or or, or put out there. Mm. But like if this team was not playing good or playing cohesive, I'd I'd say it. Mm. They're playing good and they're playing cohesive and their guys are balling out. That's what needs to happen in late February, early March. Mm-hmm. So I'm lo- really looking forward to these next games. Obviously the Santa Clara game. Um, Portland's obviously tomorrow. Hopefully we take care of business. Um, but uh, 
I think we're we're primed for you know really good basketball and go to Vegas and and hopefully get that uh, championship in there. So yeah, it's something to keep eye on, man. Like, and, and I know like some people view the bracket bracketology stuff is just like talking heads like no they Lenardi's pretty spot on Fox mm-hmm. is pretty good too like they're guys and they did they do the metrics and all that mm-hmm. stuff they're pretty spot on like if you go year to year I bet you they're probably at like a 90 percent clip of getting the teams right right it's pretty good yeah no 68 <laughs> it's crazy and the the, the thing as a, as a Gonzaga fan like since they introduced the net and you know this new system like We've never really had to have these conversations. No, like we've always just been a top yeah, is four it, seed. Is it yeah? Is it one through three basically? Yeah, yeah like right. it's yeah. so one through three, and are we going to be on the West? Yeah, you know what I mean. It's <laughs> like oh, we don't want to be you know exactly. So yeah. we are spoiled. It's it's a product of our own success, which is which is fine. But sometimes again, like I referenced last year, we were fifth. Remember we in fifteen and five, and we lost to LME at home, and everybody mm-hmm. would tell us that we suck and. Drew Timmy's washed and Julian <laughs> Strother can't play and you know Malachi Smith and uh, just all that it's all we heard and that's all I you know I play poker around town so a lot of people talk to me oh, we're not very good this year and we go to the lead eight shut up yeah shut up <laughs> like it's a long season we have good players um you know we're not bl- just because we're not blowing everybody out but all I heard for five years when we we're blowing everybody out this is boring Mm-hmm. I heard the same thing. Didn't you hear the same I thing? I did, yeah. It's, oh, this is stupid now. It's like, well, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> right? It's so true. Like, it's just like we like we complain about being the WCC, and then the WCC is, like, getting more competitive, and we're losing games, and, like, people are freaking out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the so. thing is that WCC has been a two-bid and a three-bid league for seven years in a row, mm-hmm. something like that. So, like, what else do you – you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I get some of the WCC slander, but, like – you look at some years like the ACC will be down, the Big Ten will be down, and they'll get two, maybe three teams, but they have 14 or 15 teams. Mm-hmm. So shut up. Like, yeah. And we've gone to two Final Four, two championship games. Like, So playing in the WCC obviously didn't hurt us. No. It gets no. to two Final Fours, and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. That stuff's for a different time. I get some of it, but sometimes it's just like, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about, so I'm just going to play dumb and let you continue the conversation yeah so i do with people <laughs> that, yeah that's i don't probably, know probably yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah yeah well, yep, you're right looking so. at the bracketology the one thing i thought was super interesting and- the perimeter will be right back after a word from our sponsor hey on green did you know that card control from iccu lets you turn off your cards with just the tap of a button off on trying to pay off. our bills <laughs> That, yeah, I don't probably, know. Probably yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. Looking but. at the bracketology, the one thing I thought was super interesting, and hopefully it holds up, is um, right now uh, Gonzaga, Eastern, and WSU are all uh, in the tournament. That'd be sweet. And that'd be really cool. That would be so That would be so cool. I, the big, here's, I'm going to go on a, a tiny Big Sky rant real quick. Yeah. I think I did it last season. Um, if you finish first or second in your league, you shouldn't have to play that third that first game, you shouldn't have to play three games. Remember, mm, yeah, they, remember yeah. Eastern had that twenty-game winning streak last year, and they lose in the first round, and then they're done. Yeah, like you have to, you should get protected. Mm-hmm. So, what's the point of finishing first yeah. or second, <laughs> right? Because you're gonna have to beat a team you beat three times for the third time, so it's hard. So, like that league totally fucked that up. Like yeah. protect them, you get one game off. You know, you get up, you either get to the quarters or semis or whatever, mm-hmm. and then. If they make that tournament, now they have, hey, there's a team that's won 24 games in a row from the big sky. Yeah. 14 seed instead of a 16, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 14 seed. Story. Oh, they're the little sister uh, basketball program of Gonzaga. They're literally 25 minutes away, but they're really good. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck that whole thing up. <laughs> yeah. I know did, the, yeah. the counter is like, oh, go and win. It's like, no, you have to beat a team three times. Like, What's the point of finish first or second if you don't get a game off? Mm-hmm. There's no point. There's no point, yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Like, well, you're going to play the worst. Of course you do, but you still have to beat a team three times mm-hmm. the third time that season. So, yeah, like, hopefully Eastern continues to do well, but, like, Big Sky, like, get rid of that. If you finish first or second, get rid of that game. Mm-hmm. They don't – They don't. that's the point of winning is, you know, yeah. there's some point – there's some – 
Because Gonzaga, Gonzaga used to have in the WCC. They used to have the third game, the third and game. Fuey, Fuey always complained about it. And I think even St. Mary started to figure it out, too. It's like, why do we have to play somebody? We have to beat them the third time mm -hmm. where no matter what, it killed your RPI, mm -hmm. and you have everything to lose. Yeah. So it 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 so then finishing first or second matters. Right. So like the league is smart and did that. Like mm -hmm. WCC was like, yes, yeah, let's protect our better teams. Like even St. Mary's that you know has finished second a lot. Like you want them to look good in front of the NCAA if they don't win the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so they get in and they've got in because they figured out their metric probably seven eight years ago. He started scheduling better. You know, he started yeah. to figure out like, hey. I have good enough teams that like I need to get to twenty five wins, but I can't have like you know he's had a bad metric earlier. He's mm -hmm. a good coach, but like the metric wasn't lining up with how to get in the NCAA tournament with a bid. Now he's figured it out. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I just I hope that they do that. But it would be cool if Washington State does it, mm -hmm. and then obviously us, and then Eastern. That'd be pretty cool. If schools within an hour and a half of each yeah. other or whatever. And good for Washington State too. Kyle mm -hmm. Smith's a good coach and. Their first time ranked since what 2008, I think I saw or something crazy. Oh wow! Um, so that, that was, was Clay Thompson. I think it was Clay. Tom I think it was Clay Thompson and the or the what's the little Hawaiian oh. point guard that they had, and then Aaron Baines, and then they had, uh, Kyle Weaver, I think was his mm -hmm. name. They had that good crew. Yeah. Um, God, what was the little white? white hawaiian kid's name what was his name oh gosh i'm not sure he's a good player too man super good player I, I forgot and then they had another little point guard that was good um but baines was obviously played in the league forever i don't know if clay was in that crew no um, he, i don't think he was yeah he, it was the crew with tony bennett okay that's that's yeah. what i think it was um because i think i think clay was with ken bone oh was I it think. uh Derek lowe Derek lowe yep. good player yeah um but yeah, they had that 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 pocket where they were good for like three, four years mm -hmm. um, and ranked and had some excitement down there. And um, I think Kyle Smith's turned it around, but good for him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's like I said, it's always it's more fun when U Dub's better. It's more fun when Washington State's better, and I mean that. Like mm -hmm. it's more fun when those games happen because we're playing them next year twice. Yeah, yeah. It's, and so that'll be cool for the for the you know the fan base and stuff like that. And I know some. Who fans kind of get sick of hearing about us, and mm -hmm. but then it's like, well, you guys got football, so that's true. I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> I get it, but it's like, it's not like we're just, you know, dominating the media just because we're like Ohio State versus Ohio. It's like we're just better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like our, our program is better. Um, but yeah, congrats to them. That's I didn't even pick up on that. So good, good little nugget there that they both uh, are. All three of them have them. In so Eastern's is all predicated on the fact that yeah, they, they gotta, gotta win, win the it, yeah, big gotta, sky. Gotta so. win the big sky, obviously. Right. But again, like if you're the big sky conference, like you gotta change that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just you get rewarded for winning the league mm. or finishing second. That's your reward. You play one less game, the other team that has to play is tired. Like this point of winning the league. Then what's the point of winning the league? You get a first seed, cool. Mm -hmm. But you gotta play a team th you gotta beat them three times in college is hard in one year. Mm. Harder than people yeah. think. Um, and then you have all the pressure on you, mm -hmm. like that Eastern team last year, like enormous amount of pressure. They're playing, I think NAU beat them, Liam Lloyd's team. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And they were probably just like before the game, like we have nothing to lose, like fuck it. And then it gets tight, and then that's what happens. Yeah. Right. So anyway, yeah. rant over about the big sky. <laughs> no, it's good. It's it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. Thanks for everybody listening. Again, we're going to talk about uh, Santa Clara recap. And then a huge week with San Francisco and St. Mary's, potentially two quad one wins potential, and then a chance to to really uh, move into that second slot firmly, maybe win, win the league, tie St. Mary's, who's two games ahead. But again, you just want to finish in that top two so you get that first round by in the WCC. Like how this team's playing, like where we're at. Um, yeah, keep listening. Thank you to McGilvery Environmental. Idaho Central Credit Union HDG Architecture. We'll see you next week.